Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Super Nintendo Sundays. We're gonna embark on Level World Five. I don't know why they, I don't know why they call them this. Level Five, like they're worlds. Come on. But I do enjoy these little cutscenes. This is kind of ice themed. This is the final level slash world of the game, Ice Boig. I've got a feeling that this is gonna go about as well as all the other ones have gone. AKA not at all. Yeah, this game is just, I don't know. Maybe I'm just bad at it. Part of it is, like I wanna go fast. I wanna go Sanic fast and I can't. I'm stuck in this horrible limbo of having to play by the speed of this game, which is incredibly slow. Also, what on earth are those little things that I'm crushing? Like little fleas or whatever they are. Kirby's just stomping on them. When I think of stomping on stuff, it makes me imagine that video of uh, that woman. That's an old video, it's from like the 90s. That's strange to say, isn't it? The 90s were just 10 years ago, right? And she is at a vineyard. And at this vineyard, they are doing a little bit of a demo, an expose on how they crush their grapes. Apparently, like, the way... There's there's all kinds of ways I'm sure that you could make wine, but there's, like, probably certain, quote, traditional ways that the wine has to be in order for it to, quote, count. I don't know why I'm saying quote so much. Quote, count, quote, end quote, begin quote. And I guess this vineyard is known for doing their, uh... Their wine stompings manually. They don't have like a, a press or anything that's supposed to squeeze the goo out, the grapes or anything like that. So they let you, I don't know if this is something that they would let the public do. It might've been a public event, but you can step on the grapes in your, with your feet, which I think is kind of gross. I mean, if you have clean feet, I guess it's no worse than You know, using your hands, but uh, I don't know. I don't. Also, I love bird power right here. Being able to just kind of toss it around and use it like a little pinball. But yeah, crushing grapes. The idea of that doesn't sound appetizing to drink, and it also does not sound fun for me because I would not want to get my feet dirty like that. So it's just kind of a double way of me. No, thank you. I will pass. Would love to partake in the final product if it's made without feet. So that's kind of where I draw the line. But anyway, this woman courageously steps into the bucket of uh, grapes and that was not courageous. I mean, maybe it was, I was a little bit, I was a little bold. But she steps into the bucket of grapes and she's just stomping around, having a good old gosh dang time. Really, really stepping on them grapes. And uh, it turns out that stepping on grapes is a slippery process. So she's going for it. She is just really stomping around. She slips and falls. And they had her on this platform for some reason. It was like a raised platform that was probably like a good five or six feet off the ground. And she's stepping in like this, uh, that looks like a, like a kid's kiddie pool almost, or it's like a bucket. And you just see this lady slip and fall and just completely eat it off this platform. And it looked painful. It looked bad. You know, looking back in retrospect, like, oh, it's funny. I don't think people get hurt as funny. But, like, you know, people are probably laughing in the moment. But, like, she makes these, like, horrible, like, really visceral, like, oh, oh, sounds. And she's just kind of, like, writhing in pain on the ground. They do a quick cut away on the broadcast just because of how awkward it was. And it sucks to do that, just like it sucks to have these bats suck your blood, but yeah. She was not having a good time. Hopefully she got compensated or something. Oh no, we disappointed a flower. What are you even doing trying to grow in this cold area anyway? That's your fault. You gosh dang dumb flower. What a goober. But yeah, that lady was clearly not having- Ooh, is that a met- is that a Metroid? There's-
there's some definite crosses in this game that I think are cool. I'm probably not going to facilitate these crossovers in any way that's good. In the same way that I have missed all of them so far. There's been a few of them that are very obscure to me, though. I mean, they're probably like HAL Laboratory games or other kind of Nintendo titles that I've never played. Maybe they're before my time or I'm just uncultured swine. That could be it. I'm quite the Philistine when it comes to my experiences with games. Also, this level is definitely going to make you clench a little bit. It's, a, it's an auto scroller that will catch up to you. You love that, isn't that? That's a fun way to play, you know? Like, to always feel like you're under duress. I love that. That's enjoyable. Especially in my Kirby game. You know, Kirby's a game where it's kind of leisurely, slow-paced, especially this one. As we get killed by a pterodactyl. That's awesome. Great. You yeah, don't you love it? Being chased by weather. I mean, there's people that chase weather. And so I guess, you know, weather wanted its opportunity to chase back. I can't imagine doing that though. I see those videos all the time with people that go and follow after like huge tornadoes or hurricanes and stuff like that. Like super crazy lightning storms and whatever in their area. They're called like storm chasers, I think. They'll hop in their vehicle and they'll drive like parallel to these massive, like, complete destructive tornadoes and, and whatnot. Oh boy, this is getting a little too close for comfort here. Not liking this. I also don't like that you can't move any faster than this. Like you can't scoot the screen along. You're at the whim of weather. Which I mean is true kind of pretty much for everything. But yeah, so we get out of that ice storm and somehow we are underground. Like subterranean where there's like fire and lava and stuff. The only way to cure that Cat, what hit me? <laughs> you see that? I took damage, I don't even know how. But anyway, Cat's probably my favorite of the ammo buddies, and that's not gonna change. The proverbial triple jump. I don't know if proverbial is the right word for that, but it, it feels good to say, so I'm gonna say it, proverbial triple jump. Ooh, here those Metroids are. I don't know if they can hurt us. I really played a ton of the Metroid games. I was gifted one of them as a kid for the Game Boy Metroid 2, The Return of Samus, Samus Aran, which I thought was Samus Aran for the longest time. It is not. I am a dumbo. A dumbo. A dumbo is what I meant to say. Woo! It has been a long, rough day. Long and hard. And, uh, I don't know if we're supposed to, like, do something with these Metroids, but, man, they are just really, really getting us good. I don't think Cat appreciates that very much. He looks really uncomfortable. If you could just stop, that'd be awesome. At least ask first. Jeez. I'm probably gonna say yes. But I really love Cat. I love... I mean, I love cats in general. I have a cat. She's wonderful. I love them as animals. I love them as creatures and games. I love that cats have, like, so many different... I mean, there's so many varieties of dogs, too, but, like, dogs have been so domesticated. But there are, I mean, there are wild dogs like dingoes and stuff, I guess. They're actually at the nature reserve, not too far from where I live. They have wild dingoes, which I think are cool. But, uh, and I don't know how wild they really are at that point, because they're, like, being taken care of by conservationists and stuff. But, all right, I'm getting real tired of people sucking on me in this episode. Getting pretty old, if you all could quit. But yeah, it's like cats. They have... Domestic cats, like house cats, and there's even a bunch of different types of those, you know. Like my cat, she's part Siamese, which I think is neat. Siamese cats are my probably one of my favorite breeds of cats. She's very sweet and chubby. Um, but then you have like, so you have domestic cats, obviously. And then, oh boy, I don't know if we're gonna make it. Cat, together! Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, oof. That was close. I don't think we were gonna survive. Oh no, Samus, I'm sorry. I love how the things just kind of stand there, like a disappointed dad. Like I spent, I spent money to take you to this, and this is how you repay me. I can't believe I gave 50% of my DNA to you. Those Metroids are trying to take our DNA, I know that. 
Okay. So it looks like we're gonna have one more level to do. This will be the final one of the episode. More good music as per usual. But yeah, cats. Again, I keep losing my train of thought. Cats are great because there's little cats, like the kinds you have at home, and then you got big kitties, the kind you see at the zoo, like tigers and lions, and jaguars, leopards. Ooh, Koo looks like he has had better days. I love the, the reactions that the animal buddies get when you have a different one with you at the time. Everybody is so salty. What I also love about cats is little cat, oh boy, little cats and big cats, no matter the kind you have, all kind of react the same way to stimuli. Like there's videos out there, I'm sure all of you have seen them at some point, of uh, nature reserves where they give little cats and big, oop. Okay, those platforms are not solid. Lesson learned. This could be a bit of a rough go for me. I remember... Yeah, I feel like the end of this game starts to get increasingly difficult. As all games kind of do, but like not in a fun way. But yeah, there's a video out there of some like nature rescue that they rehabilitate big cats. Like the kinds I just mentioned. Oof. Yeah, having an animal buddy here is kind of bad unless you have like a bird one. To be able to fly if you fall through the platform. You could probably recover with cat, but... It's a bit risky. These stupid pterodactyls are just all in my business. You went extinct for a reason, so stay that way. So, they were giving the big cats catnip. And you know, like, you might give your cat catnip at home if you have one. Maybe like you'll sprinkle some of the little flakes on the ground and they'll, they'll have fun, they'll roll around in it, just get incredibly high. Sometimes aggressive. I know some cats can get aggressive when they're high like that. But you can get catnip in pretty much anything, like any cat toy. Oh boy, this is not good. We're about to get rushed. Ooh. Well, that's all of our lives. We're gonna have to... Ooh. Okay. So we'll, we'll jump right back into it. Let's pretend that didn't happen. This is our first try, don't worry. The only downside to losing all your lives when the game over is you gotta start from the gosh dang beginning. Anyway, they gave all those big cats catnip in like a huge paper bag. You know, the amount of catnip that would like probably kill a house cat. But for those huge cats, it's probably fine. This is annoying. In order to get your animal body this time, you have to go all the way to the top and fall down on these ice cubes. Lame, we're gonna go with cat again. That's not really the best choice for this area, just because of the stupid dinosaurs and the platforms themselves. But we'll make do, as we always do. Oh no! Ugh. Ice physics! Not my favorite. Let's try that again. Not willing to give up on our animal buddy yet. But yeah, I don't... Yeah, Cat's not... Cat's not really ideal for this. We'll try Koo. They always seem so enthusiastic when you pick them, and when you don't, they're just... They will cry babies. So Koo is great, except for the fact that you have to be careful when you run into stuff. And these pterodactyls, like, with other moments of, like, running into them with Kirby, like... They don't seem to hurt him, but when you have an animal buddy, they do. I don't quite understand that. But we'll dodge him. But yeah, my cat, when she gets catnip, what they're through, it's a toy. Like, usually it's toys, like a little kind of plushy or stuffed animal toy. They'll put catnip in those, and then, like, a cat can kind of bat it around, and somehow, like, the fumes from it or whatever, I don't know if that's the right word, the scent of the catnip is, uh,. A way that they can enjoy themselves, I suppose. It's really funny watching cats get high. As long as they don't get aggressive, some cats will like start to get real bitey and use their claws. Okay. I don't like this at all. I don't know why they decided to put two auto scrollers like back to back in this world, but it's not not ideal. They don't even give you the option to use kind when there's water. That's kind of one of my gripes about this game, is like the animal buddies are fine. They're not remarkable, but they could have 
implement. Oh boy. We got soccer punched or soccer crowned. This is not my finest playthrough of a level, I will tell you that. This is kind of brutal. I'm apologizing in advance for my inferior gameplay here, guys. Really gotta step it up. Yeah, they have animal buddies in this game, as you've seen. I've tried to use all of them at least once. And it feels like they were made in mind of like, hey, there's these cool new things that these guys can do, but the execution really isn't there. The powers don't always necessarily like apply to the area that you're in, and the ones that they give you as the option for whatever location you're exploring, they don't really line up too well, and that kind of sucks. Like at that point, it's like, why? And here I am second guessing myself. That's a good way to die, especially when you have the screen Coming in hot with an impending doom trying to murder us. Also, there's a nice little fake out right there. This game is kind of cruel. I thought this game was supposed to be leisure and relaxing and fun. How laboratory is like, now we're gonna crank up the heat in this ice world. Also, those guys can throw those discs of doom really far. It's also friendly fire, so I do appreciate that actually. Yeah, watching, watching cats get high off a of catnip is really funny. They all kind of react the same way, for the most part. Makes them very subdued and kind of mellowed out. Okay, let's see if we can get some stars here. Don't really have a ton under our belt right now, so... Coming back and collecting some resources is probably going to be good for us. I respect that. Don't really have, you know, much in the way of lives. I was actually doing really well when I first started to play this. But then I made that big goof of deleting my, uh, my save file, which was really stupid of me. I've learned since not to do that. It's probably not the best thing to do. But, uh, he had a bunch of lives. Feeling really successful. Just kind of lost my edge, you know? You know, when you do really well at something and then you just get, you get kind of bamboozled a little bit. It happens. But one of the things that I did learn, which I think is interesting, is that not all cats can purr. I don't quite remember what the um, scientific, like, evolutionary reason that cats purr. I mean, it's like, it's a sign of satisfaction, but cats can also angry purr too, which I think is kind of adorable and also scary. My cat does that sometimes. But, uh, yeah, not all cats can purr. A lot of the big cats don't. I'm not sure why that is, but... I do believe that the largest cat, like not domestic cat obviously, but the largest cat that can purr... Oh come on! I'm gonna go ahead and cut ahead till we were back in kind of roughly the same area that we were before. Okay, so this is kind of like the area I was before where I was collecting all the stars and the ice cubes. That's kind of a cheap way to game over. They put those blocks underneath you looking like it could be a safe place to land and it's not. Rude. I don't appreciate that very much. Game. Not chill at all. Literally. I mean, it is. It's not a cool thing to do, I know that. We'll just power through the rest of this level then instead. Yeah, this game in general, it just kind of feels very random. Maybe the B team were the ones making this one. They didn't have their, their sharpest tools in the shed. Okay, so how about a little mini game? Got a bunch of Gordos here. I think that's what these are called. Looks like there's six of them. Uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to pick the one that he... How many times he smacked the one on the head? Okay. Well, I failed that. Oops. I had no idea that's what I was supposed to be doing. Yeah, this game is so cryptic sometimes. Like, with the finding the thing, finding like the happiness heart thing that makes the little creature happy, to the mini games and the, the mini bosses that unlock and stuff. This game, yeah. like it's not bad per se, but it is super weird, I would say. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't love it. Also, I'm the kind of person who, like, I don't, 
I feel so like bogged down by this game. It's so slow. This feels like one of the slowest Kirby games ever. I don't I don't personally love it. It's also really easy to die in this one. Lots of pitfalls, but thankfully we're at the end. We made it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Chef. Have some boomerangs. Cheer yourself up. And our reward is a small star. Great! Okay, well, that's all we got for today. This has been Super Nintendo Sundays. I've been D-Mike, and I'll see you later. Bye!